we worship together on this uh, wonderful late summer Sunday morning. I am glad you're here. If you're a visitor with us today, first time guest, we invite you to uh, sign and place in the offering plate today one of the welcome guest information cards. If you would like to do that, we would love to know more about you. And uh, as we worship this day, there are a few announcements I want to bring to our attention. Uh, the first one is we're going to have a guest potter in worship today. You may not have had that before. Let me say that again. We're going to have a potter in worship today. And so when you see this up here, uh, during the sermon today, he's going to be sharing his gift. His name is Ted Bate. He's the instructor at the Academy Center for Fine Arts. And uh, so as he comes, we're going to be hearing today and considering two different scripture lessons, one from Deuteronomy, where Moses is addressing the people of Israel about the choices that they will be making, and the other from Jeremiah, as Jeremiah is instructed by God to go to the potter's house. And so as we consider God's word for our lives today, a part of our time together will be uh, will be during the sermon he'll be sharing so it's like a sermon long illustration as we uh, as we hear him during this time and uh, we do want to uh, thank him he'll be here in a, in a bit uh, and so we'll thank him at that time as well well as we are here there are a few announcements I would bring to your attention uh, the first are just some announcements about coming events our United Methodist women will be having a lunch next Sunday uh, following worship and there will be persons from the Henry Fork Community Center located in Rocky Mount, Virginia who will be here to share about the good work that is done there. Also uh, next Sunday there will be new members uh, joining our church. If you're interested in becoming a member of Fort Hill Church you may contact me or call the church office and on the little tear out sheet there's information about that about uh, the contact. As we look forward towards a few other upcoming ministries, uh, Children's Church has been a part of our regular first and third Sundays here at Fort Hill. If you would be interested in being a part of Children's Church on those Sundays, you may contact the church office and we'll be glad to let you know more about it. And then in two Sundays, on September 22nd, there will be a lunch following worship on that day, and there is an insert in your bulletin about that lunch. Uh, Jacob and I both are fairly new here at Fort Hill, and so this is a way for you to get to know us. So I know Jacob, I hope you're ready. <laughs> so Jacob and I look forward to uh, sharing with you about, about ourselves and, if, and so that'll be part of the lunch. And you can see there, if you are able to bring a salad or dessert to share, that'd be helpful. And if you can call the church office to let, the, uh, let us know so that we might have appropriate seating arrangements. Well, an announcement uh, to bring forward to your attention also, uh, we want to extend our sympathy to Ann Stinson and to her family, to uh, and the death of Terry, her husband, this week. And uh, it was uh, an unexpected uh, death, and so we want to be sure and be in prayers for Anne. There will be a time for receiving of friends tomorrow here in the sanctuary from 5 to 7, and then Terry's funeral service will be on Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock. And in addition to Anne, we want to extend our prayers and sympathies to other members of Terry's family, particularly to uh, Nancy, his sister, in this time of grief. And I was sharing with the nine o'clock uh, worshiping community this morning that one of the things that I've learned to very quickly to appreciate at Fort Hill is the marvelous way that you surround each other in God's love and are supportive of each other in times of sorrow as well as times of joy. And I've certainly seen that uh, over the past few days in the ways that this congregation has reached out to Ann and her family. So we uh, want to remember Ann and, and Nancy and other members of their family 
in this time ahead. Our flowers today are given to, uh, to the glory of God and as appreciation to the Fort Hill congregation for all the ministry that is done for God's kingdom and they're given by Mark and Stacy this day. So uh, we thank them for this acknowledgement. Well, Jacob uh, has an announcement to make about music today. And so Jacob, I'll call upon you. Good morning, everybody. If y'all will take a look in your um, bulletins, the first hymn we're singing is Lead Me, Guide Me. Um, and the last thing that you're gonna hear this Sunday is uh, the postlude, which is gonna be All of My Days. And so an interesting thing about both of these songs, um, Lead Me, Guide Me was written in 1953 in a gospel style, and All of My Days was written in 2003 in a gospel style. So there's a 50 year span between these songs, and that is our way of showing that, you know, generations change, generations are always changing, but the gospel message stays the same, right? Um, so uh, if you all will join with me in the choir, we're going to uh, teach this refrain and verse. The choir is going to sing it for you all, um, and then we're going to sing it together. Uh, as listed in the bulletin. So when it comes time to sing our opening hymn, sing it well. <laughs> Let us worship God and the glory of God's love this day. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Now we will sing, Lead Me, Guide Me.
There is one God, and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all to whom we testify. With this saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and was manifested in the flesh, vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken Well, good morning. Benjamin, come on up. Come on up, buddy. How is everyone? Can you give me a big good morning? Good morning. Good morning. That's the way. Well, I want to talk a little bit this morning about choices. You know, we have choices to make in life. And long, long time ago, about 100 years ago, when the car first started to be coming around in 1920s, Ford, Henry Ford, the automaker, said, my customer can have any color they want as long as it's black. Didn't have a lot of choices for car color back then. They made them in one color, black. So, so if you were okay with that, he was good. Not a lot of choice. But, but we have choices. A lot of times your, your, your mother will say, do you want a banana or an apple? And you say, Mom, could I have a cookie? <laughs> Introducing new choices. Really, it's, it's all about living a life pleasing to God. That's the choice he wants you to make. It's really the most important choice we all make. Not just you as young kids, but as you get to be adults and young adults, it becomes even more important, and it's important for everybody in the congregation to make that choice to live a life pleasing to God. It puts a smile on his face when we do that, no matter how old we are. So let's bow our heads and say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your glorious earth, for everyone here with us today and those not able to be with us today. We pray we can make good choices, choosing a life pleasing to you. In your son's precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.
The first scripture lesson this morning is from Jeremiah chapter 18, the first 11 verses. The word came to Jeremiah from the Lord, Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it until another vessel as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord, just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will change my mind about the disaster that I intended to bring on. At another moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I had intended to do to it. Now therefore say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Look, I am the potter, shaping evil against you, and devising a plan against you. Turn now, all of you, from your evil way, and amend your ways and your doings. The word of God for the people of God. Would you join me in prayer? God grant that we may be like clay in your hands, shaped by your love, obedient to your way, with hearts yielding to you. Amen. The second scripture this morning is from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 through 20. I see I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, and I am commanding you that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments decrees and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, 
but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them. I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before your life and death. Blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give you, to give to your ancestors, to Abram, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The word of God for the people of God. God. Please join me in prayer. God grant that we may choose the life you choose, so we may be consecrated in your love that is for all generations. Amen. You may be seated. Before we begin uh, the sermon today, I want to thank Ted uh, Bat, who is here today as our sermon illustration about pottery. And Ted, we are so uh, blessed that you're with us, and thank you for being here. Well, it was time for Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house and to learn a lesson about God, life, faith, and choices. As Jeremiah went down to the potter's house, he found the potter there working with clay, and as he was working with the clay, the potter would find at times that the the vessel didn't look, look like he wanted, so he would smash it down and start over again. 
as Jeremiah watched the potter, he heard God speaking to him and telling him that God, who was faithful in the beginning of creation, continues to be faithful, just like the potter working with his clay. God continues to work with us. There is a phrase we use for that. Uh, it's from the Latin. It's called creatio continua, which means that God, when creation began, did not stop creating, but God continues to be in the act of creation. So as Jeremiah went to the potter and to watch him, he learned a lesson about how God is still active and how God himself makes choices on our behalf. As Jeremiah watched the potter working, he also learned a lesson about life. And the lesson is this, is that we have choices that we make with our lives that impact our relationship with God and how God deals with us. Do you remember what God told Jeremiah and the house of Israel? Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord? Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment I may declare concerning a nation or kingdom that I will pluck it up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will change my mind about the disaster that I intended to bring on it. And at another moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build it and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I intended to do so with it. You know, at times we might think that we're the people who have the opportunity to choose, to make our choices. But what Jeremiah teaches us is that God is still in the business of making choices. That God is in the business of responding to life. Now we're here today because we are believers in Jesus Christ, or we seek to be disciples of Jesus. At one time in my life, when I was first began my Christian walk of faith in, what, in, the, in the church I was growing up in, there was an understanding that faith in Jesus Christ was a one-time choice. We talked about making a decision for Jesus. And the thought of it was that the choice to follow Jesus was the choice of a lifetime. Well, after 43 years of being in ministry, I've come to a different understanding of what faith means in Jesus. And what I've come to realize is, is that faith in Jesus is not the choice of a lifetime, but that faith in Jesus is a lifetime of choices. Faith in Jesus is not the choice of a lifetime, it is a lifetime of faithful choices in Jesus. And I've come to that understanding because of the Old Testament readings that we heard today from Jeremiah and from Deuteronomy. And as I heard it, it made me think of where in my life am I making choices now to be a follower of Jesus? How am I aligning my life so that as God works with my life, that I will be a vessel that God desires? There's a, work we call, a word we call uh, the choices of our lifetime to be followers of Jesus, and that word is covenant. Covenant was an understanding that in the, in the Bible that when God calls us, we respond. You might remember the story of Noah and how God called Noah to build an ark and how that was something that was unusual because in the biblical account, they had not yet had rain up to this time. And so for this, to Noah to do this when there was not yet water around meant that God, that Noah had to do two things. One, he had to trust God, and two, he had to choose to obey what, and do what God called him to do. Well, if you recall the story, there was the flood, and as the flood came, uh, the, at the end of the flooding, God placed a sign in the clouds, in the sky, as a sign of God's covenant, and that was the rainbow. It was a sign of God's choice to be faithful, and by the sign of the rainbow, it was God stating that he would never again destroy the earth by flood. 
Later in the Genesis, you find the story of Abram and Sarai who were called to go to a land where they had never lived before. It required a choice of faithfulness on their part to be willing to go to where God was calling, him, calling them to a place where they had never gone before. Out of their faithfulness, God created a nation called Israel and were a part of that heritage of faith. In the New Testament, there was the call of Jesus to the disciples to follow him, and the sign of his covenant was that he would make them fishers of people. The biblical faith is the story of God's choice to be in affiliation or in covenant with us and of our choice to be in covenant with God. We choose to honor God through the choices that we make trusting that God, like a potter, will act upon our lives. In the Bible, faith is the word we use to define our relationship with God. In the book, Wishful Thinking of Theological ABC, Frederick Buechner writes these words about faith. He says, faith is better understood as a verb than as a noun, as a process than a possession. It is on again, off again, rather than once and for all. Faith is not being sure where you're going, but going anyway, a journey without maps. For our other lesson today from Deuteronomy comes at a time when Israel has been in the wilderness for 40 years, and they're about to enter into the promised land, the land that was promised to Abraham and to Isaac, and to Jacob. And as they are preparing to go into this new land, Moses, who has been their leader for 40 years, is nearing the end of his life, and he knows he'll not be going with them into the promise of a new land. And so he gathers them together, and he challenges them to a lesson about God, faith, life, and choices. And here is what Moses tells the people of Israel. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. Did you notice the emphasis of what Moses said? If you obey the commandments of the Lord that I am commanding you today, Faith is a faith of today. It begins with a walk of trust, but it does not end there. It is an ongoing act of covenant. Well, why do we choose to walk with faith in Jesus Christ? We choose to walk with faith in Jesus so that we might go to the potter's house and learn a lesson about God and life, faith, and choices. We do so, so that we might follow Jesus. Friends, it's time for us to go to the potter's house. What choices are you making today? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, amen. Thank you, potter, for being with us today.
May we pray. Bless, O oh God, these tithes and offerings that we share this day. We ask that as we share them that we might be uh, sharing the gifts of your love through our lives and that through the gifts of our lives we might share the good news of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As we join together in time of prayer this morning, there is a response that we shall be praying together, and, uh, and it shall, the response is, Glory to you, O Holy Jesus. And we shall pray this response when I say, Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray. O God, who calls us to go to the potter's house so that we might learn lessons about you, about life, about faith, and about choices. Grant, O God, that as we go to the potter's house, we might hear you speaking in our lives this day and in the life of your creation. We pray this day, O oh God, for those who have been affected by this Hurricane Dorian. We ask God that in the midst of tragedy, that your hope might be heard. Lord, in your mercy, glory to you, O oh Holy Jesus. God, grant that as we worship and seek to be aligned in the discipleship with Jesus, that we might be witnesses of your faith here at Fort Hill. We thank you for this congregation and the blessings of faith that you share with this community through this church. Grant, O oh God, that in the days and months ahead that we might grow in our faithfulness to you and our choices for your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, glory to you, O holy Jesus. Grant, O God, that in the midst of our congregation, as we remember those who are in grief this day, that we will lift up especially Anne, Nancy, Christopher, and other members of, the, of their family. Hold them firm in your love. And we give thanks to you for Terry and for his life of faith shared here at Fort Hill and through so many different ways. We thank you, O oh God, for the witness of saints and for those who have joined the, the eternal kingdom and who cheer us forward in the faith of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, glory to you, O holy Jesus. We pray this day for other members of our church family, for Sue Gay and for Bob Johnson, who are in the hospital, that your strength and healing presence will be with them. We pray for other members of our church family who grieve this day and who face times of questioning. Grant that they might know your peace that passes understanding and your strength that is eternal. Lord, in your mercy, glory to you, O holy Jesus. We pray for your kingdom eternal. We pray, O God, that as you continue to do works within your creation, that we would be open and ready to answer through the choices that we make. Grant, O oh God, that through our choices we might witness to the truth of your love. And grant that through our choices we might be faithful followers of Jesus. For it's in our Savior's name we have prayed this day. And in our Savior's name that we pray together the prayer of which he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
friends, as we prepare uh, to go out, having been to the Potter's house this day, I do want to uh, say again thank you to Ted, who was with us today, and for sharing the gift of pottery and, uh, with us. Thank you so much. Well, friends, God has called us. We've been to the potter's house. It's time to go out now and make choices that will honor God. Go forth in the faith and the fellowship of all true disciples of Jesus Christ this day. Amen.